Hey guys, what's up? It is about 12.30 a.m. or so, and I was going to go to bed, but I just want to talk a little bit about what's going on right now. This is probably the worst market that many of you guys have experienced, and I wanted to just show you really quick how long I've been in the market and maybe give you guys a little bit of perspective, those of you guys that are really, really, really freaking out right now. So this is my Coinbase account, and I've made a video about this in the past, but I just want to scroll down and just show you guys how long I've been around. So the first time I purchased Bitcoin was here. It was 4-9-2013. So that was, well, I don't know. What is that like? Seven, eight, nine, nine years ago. So Bitcoin was $234 then. And, you know, I purchased a Bitcoin here for $76. And don't worry, you know, I sold it because I am a moron. This would be my third bear market, right? So this is where I first started buying Bitcoin was again, early 2013. It jumped up to around $1,000, then it tanked back down, uh, I think, to like $200 again. I mean, it was rough. That was about an 80, 80 to 85% drop in the price of Bitcoin. So I was buying Bitcoin then, and you can see a lot of buys and sells, buying three Bitcoin, and then, you know, selling Bitcoin at a loss. So I've just been around here for a while. So this is, again, my third third bear market. And in 2017, I was a little bit more knowledgeable, but not really. I mean, in this bear market or what we're going through right now, it doesn't freak me out for a few reasons, which I'm going to cover a little bit later in the video. It shouldn't freak you out either. Well, first, let me just go through Coinbase. So as you can see, I'm just going to pick this. Where am I? I am in uh, 2014. So we are about uh, eight, eight years ago or so. Uh, Bitcoin's $500 or so. You know, just buying and selling, buying and selling. You can see I was doing some uh, DCA into Bitcoin every single week for a while. I was buying $50, which honestly, had I never stopped that, literally never stopped and never sold, I would be insanely wealthy right now. And that's what's going to happen in five years from now, three years from now. I mean, definitely eight to 10 years from now. I can't believe I was buying Bitcoin nine years ago. It's It's kind of crazy to think about. But I sold most of it, if not all of it. I sold all of it actually before 2016, right? It went to 1,000, then it went back down to 200, and I was like, I'm out, this is stupid. I did not hodl. I had no concept of what this was or what the heck I was doing here. So here, you know, buying $50 a week, you can see I was doing what everybody should be doing, <laughs> basically buying what is this? $50 a week. So that's like $2,500 or so dollars a year consistently. So where are we now? We are in like 2014, the end of 2014. Bitcoin is now around $344, buying $50 a week consistently. Like good for me, right? And you're going to see that I'm going to sell some Bitcoin for cheaper than what I bought it. Look at this. I sold 2.23 Bitcoin for $226 of Bitcoin. Oops, right? Uh, that sucks. Here I'm selling Bitcoin for a little bit of a profit, 871 maybe. I don't know. Um, bought Bitcoin here, bought Bitcoin, sent some Bitcoin. Anyway, guys, this is not my first rodeo. So it it is challenging to hodl. I'm not telling you that it's easy to go through what we're going through right now. It's really, really rough, right? This is not an easy time. So here I'm buying Bitcoin for literally 10x what I was just a few years prior. So three years prior to this, I was buying Bitcoin for 10x. I was selling it for way less than what it is now or what it was then at $3,500. So anyway, you get the idea. Uh, and I have a lot for Ethereum as well. I was buying a lot of ETH at the time too, but I was selling a lot for a loss. So what we're in right now, the time we're in right now is... Not easy unless you have a really long-term view and something like the logarithmic chart really shows how this looks over time. It shows that we are basically going up, up and up and up. So this is the trend of Bitcoin and it's not going to stop in my opinion. Uh, there's no reason why this should stop. Bitcoin has a limited supply. A lot of the coins that you like have a limited supply. Some of them are deflationary and we know what's going to happen with Bitcoin. It's going to hit a million dollars a coin. Like that is not even up for debate. What is up for debate is whether or not you are willing to hold. Really, that is the question. And this applies to a lot of other coins that I cover on the station. Celsius Network, it's a dollar right now. It's probably going to go below a dollar. It actually already has a little bit earlier today. Guess what? 
I'm holding. It's down 87% from its all-time high. I'm going to hold. Why? Because the company is solid and sell token is going to have more and more utility as time goes on. Let's talk about Crow. It is uh, 17 cents. So we are down 81, let's just say 82% from its all-time high six months ago. Yeah, it sucks. But guess what? I think crypto.com is going to be around for decades to come. That's just my belief. You can disagree with me. I don't really care. But it's coins that you believe in that you will hold through market downturns. Obviously, Ethereum, I am holding. I'm holding a lot of layer ones that have been hit very, very hard, 70, 80, 90%. I'm holding on to gaming tokens that are down 90 to 95%. I think that crypto gaming, blockchain gaming is not just going to go away. I think that engine coin is not just going to disappear. I think that, you know, Polygon, for example, is not just going to go away, right? I think that Ethereum is going to stay and we're going to need Polygon to make it more effective. And who knows when Ethereum 2.0 is going to come, but this is still going to be around and this is still going to be important. There's a lot of tokens, a lot of tokens, and I'm only covering a few. I'm willing to just hold. So guys, not my first rodeo, like I've, like I've been saying. This is technically my third bear market, and there aren't that many people that have really been around this long. Now, a lot of people talking on YouTube were maybe around in 2016 and 2017. Uh, I would say maybe the majority. There's a handful of people that have been around before me as well. Uh, before me, there really wasn't much going on. I mean, taking a look at what was happening before 2013, 2014. Yeah, I don't even know. I mean, that was like Max Kaiser days. That was like maybe Dan Held was there. Coinbase, or I should say CoinGecko, only goes back to 2013 when the price was, you know, in, in the 100s. But again, I purchased Bitcoin. Uh, I had a purchase for $70 back there. So I still got Bitcoin at a very, very cheap price. Not single digits. You know, I wasn't getting Bitcoin at the price that like Richard Hart was getting it when he was mining it on his computer. But I was still around for the very beginning. And uh, some of you may be wondering where I first heard about Bitcoin and it was actually from this guy. His name is Stuart Wilde. He was a metaphysical, kind of spiritual author, teacher, lecturer. Uh, he wrote all about kind of different realms. Uh, he was heavy into psychedelics. He passed away in 2013. And I can't find it. Maybe it was deleted. But he wrote an article in 2012 talking about Bitcoin in 2012. And I didn't buy it then. I didn't quite know what it was. Uh, 2012 was Mt. Gox. I think that was before Coinbase. So it was kind of difficult to buy. It was a little bit annoying. But I ended up buying some, I believe, because of him. He used to be a big blogger and, you know, he was a really cool guy anyway. He wrote a lot of really, really cool books, uh, kind of about personal power, about um, emotions, about a lot of like Taoist uh, philosophy and stuff like that. So anyway, I did. Uh, some psychedelic journeys with him in summer of 2012. Uh, I was in Europe at the time. So then it took me about a year to buy some. And then I did. So that's what happened. So let me finish the video talking about why the drawdown in crypto and Bitcoin and everything is even less concerning than the normal four-year cycles. So there's a couple of reasons why Bitcoin is drawing down so much just to start. I mean, we are in the traditional bear market time of the four-year cycles, if you believe in that. We're also in this crazy time with the economy kind of completely independent of crypto, which I've talked about a lot, which a lot of you guys know, the interest rates, inflation, all that kind of stuff, kind of global equity, uh, bonds and debt, and there's all sorts of stuff happening right now. So we are seeing just a lot of compounding things. We are seeing, again, the natural four-year cycles, global economy, macro stuff. Then we're seeing recently what happened with Terra and UST selling hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin. But taking a look at the NASDAQ really quick here on Webull, I believe I read that this is one of the worst starts for NASDAQ in a long time, in decades. And I know the same thing is for the S&P 500. This is just a horrible, horrible begin of the year. We are, I think, way worse than even 2020. So why this gives me a little bit of um, confidence is because this is not just crypto, right? This is not just the crypto market tanking, but the equity markets are going up like it has in the other cycles. In 2018, when cryptos took a big dump after the 2017 high or early 2018 high, the rest of the markets were doing pretty well. You take a look here in 2018, 
This is when cryptos took a huge dive and we were going up a ton in the NASDAQ. So it felt a little bit more separate then. We had cryptos and then we had the rest of the market, the rest of the stock market. Now we're getting everything happening at once. So everybody's kind of in this together. Like most people are just getting absolutely hammered right now. We may see the Fed tighten more. We may see the Fed take more liquidity out of the markets and tame inflation even more if they think they're doing that. And that's going to you know hit cryptos possibly even harder. But going back to me buying all this Bitcoin in 2013, you know, and sitting through a couple different cycles. So here's what I regret. I regret selling Bitcoin up until basically last year in 2021, because I had eight years of buying well below it reached all time highs, or at least the highs of last year. I also regret not continually buying Bitcoin, because even if I was buying at the peak of the cycle in 2013, and I was buying at the peak of the cycle in 2017. So let's say I was buying at a thousand and then nineteen thousand dollars. I'm still way above. I would still be better off than if I held cash, even at the current price of Bitcoin now, which I know is getting kind of scary. But we're still way above where we were at the last market cycle peak. Could it go below? I mean, sure. We are in this time when the stock market is taking a dump and it's taken everything with it, guys. Also, if you want some free stocks, Webull is giving away free stocks. So there's a link below for that. If you want to throw that out there, now's a good time to take free money whenever you can get it. And most of you guys are already on Celsius, but they're still giving away $50 in Bitcoin when you create an account using my code or your friend's code. You just got to deposit $400 of crypto. But I do have a complaint that my face is not right here next to Scott, but that's okay. All right, guys, that's it for the video. It is now a little later and I'm going to stop recording, edit this, get it out. And this video is just to give you guys a little bit of perspective during this challenging time. If things get more challenging and things get crappier and your portfolio keeps going down in terms of US dollars, which it may, just know that it's going to go back up once this cycle ends, once this Bitcoin cycle ends, once this macro cycle ends, once the Fed reverses course, things are going to go back up. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I know it was a little bit uh, off the cuff and not a lot of preparation, but I just wanted to get this out before I head to bed or I watch more uh, Outlander, which I've been uh, <laughs> beginning to watch. It's kind of a good show. I finished Ozark and uh, that was exceptional. Ozark was really good. Now I completely switched the genre to Highlanders in the 1750s, a little bit of time travel and a lot of, uh, a lot of romance and sex. So it's actually a pretty cool show. All right, guys, talk to you later and bye for now.